Alrighty, what's up guys? Single player Nacho here, and you're in for a fright, because this is yet again another Resident Evil BOW list. This time, the 10 most terrifying BOWs in Resident Evil. Now Resident Evil is known as a gigantic benchmark. We're talking about a series that literally made me piss my four-year-old pants. Is that too old? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mom. We know how evil the minds at Umbrella are, how they've concocted these devilish creations. Every single BOW that there is in existence is at least a little bit scary. But these 10 take the f***ing cake. Oh man, these are very scary dudes. And not only are we taking a look at their horrifying appearance, we have to take into account how these BOWs are introduced, the music, is their sound, is it completely silent, and a little bit of their backstories, which make them even scarier than they appear. So without further ado, let's get to it. First up, we have Pluto, AKA a whole ass planet. Hubba Bubba, this is a ginormous abomination introduced in the lesser known Resident Evil game, Dead Aim. So if this is the first time you're looking at this as a Resident Evil fan, I wouldn't be surprised. And Pluto's towering stature, combined with his uh, width and depth, makes Pluto very difficult to get around. And here are some lesser known facts of the lesser known Pluto. First of all, Pluto, the name anyways, is based on the Roman god of the underworld already pretty damn scary. And Pluto's lore, he used to be a regular man, and he was unknowingly forced into an umbrella trial. There he was tortured and defaced. Eventually during the trial, the scientists deemed it humane to drive a metal rod into Pluto's head to make him feel less pain. What a couple of assholes. And the end result is a perfect mutation of bulbous gelatinous. I know we're talking about mutations, but it's more of a mutant vibe. Hills have eyes mutant vibe I'm getting from Pluto, which makes him pretty creepy. And that's why Pluto belongs on this list. Next up, we have Br fuck. Br Brzak, AKA a giant freaking totodile. Brzak is a gigantic mutated shark that actually is very creepy. And it's a personal type of creepy for me. I'm very scared of ocean creatures, even a harmless whale. I'd be like, get that out of my face right now. And no offense to Neptune from Resident Evil 1 remake or the Resident Evil classic, there's just no comparison. And Resident Evil 6's version of Jaws is tastefully introduced and terrorizes Helena Harper and Leon S. Kennedy and his luscious locks. Just take a look at this scene. I would not be able to survive this. The way Berzak minimizes both protagonists, it's just insane. Even more insane near is the fact that Berzak comes from humans. That's right, these guys have a human origin. I guess you can make anything possible if you stick certain things into certain entrances in a laboratory. <laughs> it's just like, how? How's that possible? Anyway, even more interesting than that, the purpose for Berzaks were to act as giant dumpsters. Anything that the family, that nefarious group that created the Berzak, needed to dump into the ocean, the Berzak were meant to clean it up. But then I would have to wonder, who cleans up the Berzak's shit? Where does that go? I don't know. Giant, creepy, haunted face shark man. Very scary and belongs on this list. Next up is the Bandersnatch, aka Walmart Tyrant. That's right, the thing you're looking at, this abomination, is related to the Tyrant series, albeit a very cheaply made one. But these evil corporations, they thought, how can we make a more practical solution than that of the Tyrants that we've already made? Well, there's a concept, the Bandersnatch. Unfortunately, because of the cutting of costs, the Bandersnatch is very flawed and the flaw begins in its enormous left arm. Now, all these facts make the Bandersnatch seem pretty silly, and I've talked mad shit this entire time. But the entrance of the Bandersnatch in Code Veronica, I think it's pretty damn scary and well done.
That's right, silence and then boom. And its gameplay also gives it an edge in scariness. I know tank control games can be hit or miss with people, but this thing can quickly, with no lag time, appear behind you. And that's the Bandersnatch. Scary indeed. Next up we have the Verdugo, aka Salazar's right hand. I've sent my right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off? Oh, it comes off, Leon, and it does a lot of damage, particularly to your head. The Verdugo is also very, very, very scary. One of those top-tier scary enemies from Resident Evil 4, and there are plenty in that game. There's a pretty awesome callback to Resident Evil 1's Hunter first point of view coming towards you to eat your butthole, this time with the Verdugo, through those dark sewer tunnels. I can't think of a scarier area to introduce this beast. There's even jump scares leading up to the boss fight that can really catch you off guard. But worse than all of that, a little beeping sound and you're locked in with this engineered to kill monster. And it is fast faster and deadlier than most BOWs. And the situation this creates is a very fucked up one because if you're low on ammo or health items, you're just supposed to run around and hope for the best, which is a very terrifying proposition. And overall, the Verdugo just blazing speed makes him a very creepy guy. Next up, Graveyard Zombies from Resident Evil 6 and Resident Evil 1 Remake, aka Expired Breadcrumbs. Now, zombies wholeheartedly deserve to be on this list. The basic zombie, we all have a memory about encountering that very first one in the mansion. But the design of Graveyard Zombies take it to the next level. People like to shit on Resident Evil 6, myself included, a lot. But check this out. Look at the movement of the graveyard zombies. It's straight out of a horror flick. And if the tone of Resident Evil 6 was a little bit different, this would be a complete horror package. They lunge at you with their degrading skin that's falling apart, rib cage exposed, face, there's no face. Extremely off-putting enemies. More than that, of course, they want to eat you, and they can. Could you imagine, like, being chased by someone that wants to eat you? What kind of caveman instincts would that bring up inside you? Screwed up situation overall, and the dozen or so Resident Evil 1 remake zombies that appear in the graveyard slash cemetery also have that edge in creepy design that differentiates themselves from the regular zombies. All in all, graveyard zombies get out of my lawn. Next up, we have Tyrant091, aka, please get this man into a dentist, hurry, fast. And Tyrant091, another one of those strange BOWs that came out of Resident Evil Dead Aim. I think it's just a very strange game and it produced very strange enemies. And this is one of those early 2000 games where the graphics could not keep up with the demented thoughts, the concepts of the developers, and the end result is nightmare fuel. And that's what gives Tyrant 091 that weird appearance. The second most obvious scary detail of the Tyrant 091 is those dead ass golf eyeballs. I don't think we usually see this in BOW's ghoulish looking eyes. There's no nose and then the first thing you'll notice is that abomination of a mouth. It's like a chess game being played inside this man's chompers. What's going on here? Regardless, he's still pretty buff. Okay, he's got that going. What's not good about all of those details is that this thing wants to kill you. And I'm sure you're wondering because of its face, what's up with this guy? What's his backstory? Well, the Tyrant 091 is probably not surprising, considered a failed experiment. The laboratory actually did not have enough power while this thing was being created. And so Tyrant 091's heart is on its back and it's Exposed. What a great game mechanic to kill this thing. And just like every Resident Evil enemy ever, it has random ass tentacles sprouting out of its body. Tyrant 091, you give me the heebie jeebies. Here we go, guys, the moment you've all been waiting for. Next up, the Crimson Head, aka Grumpy Pants, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just no. Anyone who's made it that far into Resident Evil 1 Remake, which is a very scary game to actually play, to get to that scene, the reactions 
are all the same. The Crimson Head is a memorable shit your pants moment synonymous with every giant horror movie or video game ever. Because you've been playing the game with relative ease, maybe you were a little bit scared of the zombies and they're very slow lurking. You probably make fun of them like, eh, fuck this guy, slow ass bitch. I'm gonna put 10 rounds into his belly button. <laughs> I don't know who would say that. And then you have the dogs, which are a little bit fast paced. And then you get the extremely aggravated, lost their beauty sleep, crimson heads. They're vicious with their giant claws, meat breath, gingivitis, and the overcooked appearance, and obviously their origins stem from that overcooking. If you leave a zombie alone for too long, those cells reproduce, mutate. They are crying out for blood and murder. Cute, isn't it? So the crimson head is a natural progression from all those chemicals inside of a dead body. Of course, as we know, crimson head turns into a liquor. All in all, it would be a crime not to have the crimson head on this list easily at the top of most people's lists, I would say. But here are the next top three, in my opinion. Next up, we have The Revenants, aka Torn and Twisted. That could have been a cinematic masterpiece if it was introduced to film. A very horrifying introduction to The Revenants, which all of its qualities have top, top tier horror in them. The design alone, split faces, pipes driven into their thighs, arms everywhere. It's all indescribable. The graying, dead skin. We take all of this into account and the horrifying noises that the revenants make and their creepy ass movement. And probably worse than all of those things, the revenants lore. If you're thinking, hey, kind of looks like a mixture of things, well, that's because body parts, human body parts, were stitched together to create the revenant. Once all that handy stitch work is finished, you spray some Ouroboros virus. I can't pronounce Ouroboros, I'm sorry. And it comes to life. The revenant is born. And even the Wikia makes this thing more demonic than it probably is. The Wikia states, they are able to move each body part as if its own, though they were noted for their form of movement more comparable with a doll or puppet being manipulated than natural walking. Holy fuck, that is so creepy. Honestly, I would rather encounter a crimson head over a revenant. And the fact that a bunch of these were just roaming around same island. The image alone terrifies me. These things just walking around like puppets and dolls freely. Imagine being stuck there by yourself at night, seeing these things just waddle up to you. No thank you. No thank you. Next up at number two, the Regenerators and Iron Maidens, aka Long Arm Daddies. <laughs> Regenerators easily elevate Resident Evil 4's scare factor to a whole other level. You have creepy alien body design, red bulging eyes, sharp teeth, fast movement if you're shit out of luck with ammo. These things start to vibrate and walk around like toddlers towards you and you'll unlock their gruesome death scene. I mean, imagine a child playing this. It's no good. And again, it's that atmosphere that regenerators bring to the table, that pedophile breathing. <laughs> And in a situational sense, again, if you're low on ammo, low on health, you're fucked against these guys. I remember one time I accidentally sold that thermal scope, which is their weak point indicator. That was a pretty stupid eight-year-old thing of me to do. <laughs> I was stuck with one regenerator down a prison cell. Again, like I said, they're in prisons, they're pedophiles, it's a whole other lore video down the road. Anyway, and then you have the second variation, Iron Maidens twitching, twisting bodies filled with spikes all over the place and I mean everywhere and they're drooling and they don't have any eyes saddest thing is they really just want a hug I mean check that out what's more scarier than love people let's be honest regenerators definitely on this list creepy fucks and at the very top of the list Vitores Mendez the chief aka the big cheese now, I already know that the comments, this is gonna be a pretty big debate, and it's fine, but this is what I'm referring to. Hasta luego.
everyone that I've talked to that has played Resident Evil 4 has gone back to this particular scene that they just cannot get out of their minds and I have to honestly agree with them. The audio, the visuals, the way the camera works slowly reveals this mutating mess of a creature. The sounds, everything is the perfect formula for piss your pants baby girl and we're just talking about 10 terrifying bow's this is also very disgusting the way the animators made each of those tentacles splash around with <laughs> plaga juice i will never look at seafood the same after b torres mendez and the most screwed up thing i think about this entire situation how the developers just leave you right in front of this guy at the beginning of the boss fight what the hell Capcom. The background music is so creepy, along with those large thuds of footsteps from those K-Swiss. Those are actually K-Swiss branded shoes. You didn't know this. You still have this human figure attached to this monster. I think that's what really confuses the mind. Makes you feel like, whoa, 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 something makes me want to hide very quickly. It's all the fear that comes out of the chief from Resident Evil 4. Maybe you can argue that the B.O.W. or I should say the Plaga's mutation isn't as scary as the Revenants, the Crimson Heads, Lickers, even the zombies. But I'm talking as a complete package. The crime scene is top notch for me. And there's two parts to this freaking thing. Can you imagine that? You shoot off its gross ass tentacled spine and it rushes you from above like a goddamn puppet from hell. The entire scene is already foggy. At least it's well lit. Could you imagine this thing in the dark? No thank you. All in all, Vitoris Mendes, the chief. My personal most terrifying BOW in Resident Evil. And thank you guys so, so much for all of the support and for sticking around this long. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you did for more horror lists, lore, and mysteries. Comment down below your personal most terrifying BOW in Resident Evil. I definitely want to know in the comments and discuss. If you'd like to support the channel any further, there are links in the description. There's a second channel where I play a bunch of random indie horror games and I'm just a dumbass. It's not like it's any different on this channel. Check that out. Subscribe on that and there's merch there's a cute sticker t-shirts and a sweater all of these links will be in the description again guys thank you all so much for all the support have an awesome rest of your day and as always stay single